HMOs or studios, they're saying, whoa, what's happening? Is this still a good strategy? Because everyone's wanting to sell them. Hey, Mark Harvey here. We're literally just in the middle of something called Implementation Week, which is why I'm dressed like this, which is why all these guys are doing business out there. Now, we're already raising money, we're doing deals. Oh, I'm getting this question a lot now. All of the people who want to invest in HMOs or studios, they're saying, whoa, what's happening? Is this still a good strategy? Because the, everyone's wanting to sell them. They're all coming to the market. Why are they coming to the market? I'm going to tell you why they're coming to the market. It's because the new EPC regulations, people are going to have to spend money on it. But the problem is they haven't been making money. It's not up to standard. They're not getting the high rents for luxury, solid, secure accommodation. They've just not been doing it properly. So here is what I am doing about it. I want to let you into my strategy. So right now, I'm actually looking at a few that I'm taking on that are already existing HMOs. I've done many other projects before, but we've done total renovation. Now I'm doing part renovation. Part renovation means I'm only going to spend 20, 25,000 on it to turn this baby around. And all I need to do is make sure that the cash flow can service the interest. That might be 75% from the bank loan and 25% from an investor. So I can still do deals with zero of my own money. The cash flow is going to pay the interest to the bank, which is the mortgage payment, and then also the investor. And I get to keep the profit. Plus then I'm taking on uh, almost an unlimited source. I'm taking on HMOs that are in Article 4 areas, which people wouldn't even be able to get planning in these unless you know what you're doing. We teach people how to do that. But there's areas where they just won't allow anymore because it's reached the certain saturation point where they won't allow it to happen. So look, there's golden opportunities. There's massive opportunities out there in this HMO and studio sector. You've got to get on top of it. You've got to figure it out. Because if not, then you're going to look two, three, four years down the line and say, how did somebody build like a 10 million pound portfolio by scraping up all of these deals that everyone else had to let go and they've got to let go of them because a lot of people own them in their own name so section 24 has kicked their ass they've had to put their tax return in and most of them realize that they owe money on buying properties off people where that's happened to them they've realized that after they put their tax return in they still owe money Yes, they didn't make no money. Not only did they not make money, they owe money still to the tax man now. Yeah, because they changed the rules. Another thing is the EPC, they don't have the thousands of pounds that it's going to take to upgrade the energy efficiency in there. And they don't have the money to upgrade and keep it up to standard because HMOs and studios are a higher traffic source and type of accommodation. So, you know, there's going to be more traffic in there, it's higher turnover, so you're going to need to put some repairs and some maintenance and other expenses, which people just are not accounting for. Why? Because they're fixed in these low rates and now the rates have changed, they're absolutely screwed. So, this is where you come in. You come in, so you can come in and take over these properties, you start making money, you add value and you save the person who's going to be in trouble. I mean, what could be better than that? So, how do you make sure you get the rent to service the interest? Well, the problem is, People do not understand how to market their product and how to make it look freaking awesome. Yeah, that's where our interior designers come in. Very efficient, you pay the money, they're gonna get the job done. These will be the first properties to go on that street and in that area. Yeah, so all we're doing is that little bit marginal, little bit more, but you get so much more for it because people will pay more and they will stay longer if it's a great place. You don't want people coming back saying, oh, you know, man, I can't wait to get out of this place. You wanna be like, yeah, I'm actually great. I'm close to the city and I can do it and it's a very cost efficient way of living. So that's what you've got to make sure that you do. And in terms of getting the EPC up to standard, you've got to work with great contractors who know how to do this very cost efficiently. You don't want people just saying, hey, we're going to strip everyone back and rip everything back. There are great technologies out there for windows. There's great technologies out there for insulation on walls and in the roofs. And there are even grants. You can get grants to help you with this. The council want to help people bring the uh, EPC in the, well, they call it the U-value in the construction industry, which is like the thermal efficiency of it. it. Keeps it cool in the summer, yeah, and also keeps it warm in the winter, so you, you lose less heating. You know, so even then your bills come down as well, not alone, you just your EPC is good and it's got to be up to standard as a landlord. So you know, people are always asking me as well, do we put en suites in there? Yeah, you've got to make en suites in there. I mean, look, that's very, very temporary accommodation. If people are having shared showers and all the rest of it, I see them, there's loads of them on the market. The ones that are gone and where my occupancy is very high and stays above 95, if not 100%, a lot of the time, is because the standard of the living, they've got their own space, even as a bare minimum, just a double on suite room. I still have a few properties with some shared ones. They're always the last ones to go. They're the first ones to be empty. They're the longest ones and they're the smallest amount of rent. So uh, I, I, I sold a lot of those. 
uh, just because they were the opportunities that I took on in the first place. You know, we made lots of money from them. A lot of people benefited them. And people are still, in fact, I've seen one of the ones I sold now come up. You know, the person who bought it off us is now give it to someone else I know who is now doing a rent to service accommodation. Listen, listen the opportunity to make money just goes on and on. So to summarize here, so you can go out there and take some action. You need to find places that are run down, not being run efficiently, that are gonna then you know, be up for sale. Then what you do is make sure that you do the upgrades to make it top of the market. Get the interior designer in, get the EPC uh, situation sorted, get a contractor in who knows how to do that, make that up to standard. And then you gotta work out your numbers to make sure that this increases well above and beyond serve the interest and give you your uh, profit as well. Until next time, do the right thing for the right reason because that's the only way you're going to discover your true potential.